fucking just had a stroke. What's up guys, it's Casey from Casey's Customs and today we're going to be putting power windows in Big Bertha. She is a 53 GMC and I'll put some more footage so you can see the side of it, but it has stretched doors. This isn't a stock door, this is actually two doors welded together so they're, they're huge. Um, obviously there's no power window kit or anything like that that's going to work. So we're going to kind of have to make our own. So this will work for anybody that's building anything crazy or if you just want to try and make your own instead of using like a universal kit. I did buy a universal kit for this originally and I was, it, it wasn't going to work at all. So it's just too thick and it was too, it was just too everything really. So uh, hopefully you can get a couple tips from this, but let's keep going. So this is the inside of our door. You can actually see the seam of where the two doors came together. And then all this is just inner bracing to obviously hold the door together. The only thing, well, it's, it's longer, which is great, but these doors are still pretty thin. There's only like three inches from this bar to the door, you know, to the actual sheet metal of the door. There's a couple things you could do. Obviously, you could cut these and move these if you wanted to. I don't want to do that at all. I like where they're at. Um, I just, it was tricky trying to find a thin enough, you know, window motor and all that stuff to fit in there. I ended up buying three of them. I got one from a Ford, I got one from a Chevy, and then I actually bought a universal one. And none of them were really working great. I didn't love how they were going in there. So um, I had a brain fart and somebody said that I needed to start looking for hatch power windows, you know, like a like a hatch on like an SUV. Some of the some of the SUVs now they'll have a roll down rear window. The, the hatch motors I guess are real thin. Luckily, found one out of a Toyota that's going to work real nice. It's thin enough to get back in there. It's still going to take a ton of fabrication to mount it, but at least it's thin enough that it can get back there relatively easily. Here it is, and as you can tell, it's real thin. It's a very compact motor, which is nice, because like I said, a lot of the other ones I have are really thick. I don't care if it's wide this way, because I can always cut it down. These tracks are going to be perfect where they're at, but I've had to cut and make these longer, I've had to make these shorter, I've had to do a bunch of stuff with these. I think they're fine where they are. But, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go for something like that. That's the goal. But, obviously, as you can tell, there's no mounting hardware, there's no mounting anything because this isn't a Toyota, you know, Suburban or whatever, whatever. a Toyota SUV. So, we gotta make a mount. First thing I'm gonna do is make a big plate that just holds this steady. And then what we can do, instead of trying to, you know, make one bolt mount here, one bolt, we'll take the whole plate, slide it up in there, and then we'll just have to mount the plate. So, let's do that. Take a look. Good news. Good news. It is not backwards. I thought it was. Hey. So now we got that mounted, but this is flimsy. This is just a piece of sheet metal. And also, I need more bracing back here to mount the bracing to the door. So I'll put some square tubing back here. later. Okay, now we need to put a piece of square tubing there and there and we can weld it to the door frame. Sweet!
Bada bing, it works. We are done. Super happy with how it came out. This, like I said before, this was the third setup, I, or no, fourth setup I ended up using. Um, it was a lot easier than trying to make a universal kit, like a Speedway universal kit work. Uh, it actually ended up going in a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Now all I have to do is just start all over and do the other side, but the second side is always easier than the first side because the first side you're kind of figuring stuff out. Um, also, I welded these in. I don't know if you could tell on video, but since the actual tracks and stuff bolt into this plate, it's still adjustable just in case anything's off a little bit. But thank you guys very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff they tell you at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace. Fuck. <laughs> the old gimbal fucking just had a stroke.